Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel again. So today we're gonna look at Fedora 34 with Snapper. So how we can install Snapper and use snapshots on Fedora 34. Now it's gonna work also on Fedora 33, but I thought I'm gonna use Fedora 34 since it's coming up probably in a couple of weeks. And if you wanna try it out, you can definitely do so. And my recommendation is to try it out before in a virtual machine as I'm doing here. So I would say let's get going here and jump into the desktop. So you can see this is a typical Fedora uh, installation. I didn't change actually anything. So if I pull up here one terminal and uh, let me go full screen here and increase the font size, I type in LSPLK. You can see this is a typical installation of Fedora 34 in this case. I didn't do anything special here. It installs basically alone with the Anaconda installer. It created the EFI partition, a boot partition and a home root uh, partition where the sub volumes are there because as you probably already know, uh, BadRFS is now the default file system in Fedora. You can check this also by typing in df and then dash h and to grab this in my case to VDA because that's the name of the disk. And as you can see here, my uh, EFI partition VDA1, VDA2 is the boot and VDA3 is both home and root. So this is the, these are two different sub volumes shared on the same partition basically. So what we can do now, we can check the sub volumes by typing in sudo badrefs sub volume and then list. And we are gonna list the ones on the root file system here. Need to authenticate. And as you can see, we have three sub volumes. So we have the home sub volume here, ID256. We have the root sub volume with the ID258 and we have a sub volume varlib machines with the ID262. However, the top level ID is 258. That means actually this sub volume is a nested sub volume of the root sub volume. They are sharing basically the same ID here, although this one has its own ID, but the top level ID is actually the same as the root. So that means it's a nested sub volume. Now we can go ahead and install our packages. So let's type in sudo dnf install. The first package is of course a snapper. And then I'm gonna install also python3 dash dnf dash plugin dash snapper. So the Python 3 DNF plugin snapper is basically an equivalent of the snap pack package on Arch. This is gonna take pre and post snapshots when you're for example upgrading the system or installing packages. Then we can hit enter here. It's gonna check once the repositories and then we can hit Y to accept the packages. This is not take long. It's not a big package. There you go. The installation is now done. Now the next step is to create the root configuration for snapper. So to do that we can type in sudo snapper dash c for configuration i'm going to call this configuration very simply root here and then create dash config and we're going to create this for the root file system and then hit enter now if we are checking again the sub volumes in our system here with the previous two commands you can see we have an extra sub volume here called dot snapshots now this sub volume again at its own id 266 but the top level id is 258 exactly the same like varlib machines. That means this snapshot sub volume is actually nested under the root sub volume. So this is fine, but I want to actually have the ability to mount this manually. So what I need to do here, I need to basically delete this sub volume, create a new directory and then recreate that sub volume that is gonna be mounted on the directory that I'm gonna create now. So it's a little bit complex to explain actually, if I show you, it's probably easier. So the first thing, let's delete this sub volume. So to do this, we can type in sudo badrefs subvolume, then delete, and then slash dot snapshots, and hit enter. So as you can see there, it deleted the subvolume. Now let me clean up the terminal here. The next step is to create a new directory where I will mount the new subvolume that I will create later. So to do this, I'm gonna type in sudo mkdir, and I'm gonna call the directory slash dot snapshots, and then hit enter. Now I need to mount the file system so that I can create a new sub volume in there. So to do this, I'm gonna create a directory for it. So I'm gonna type in sudo mkdir slash mnt slash badrefs, for example, and hit enter. And then I need to mount the root partition into this directory here so that I can see the sub volumes in there. You remember from before when we checked the list of the partitions, the root partition is VDA3. So I'm gonna type in sudo mount slash dev slash VDA3 and it's gonna be mounted on slash mnt slash badrefs, and then hit enter. Now, if I move into the badrefs directory by typing cd slash mnt slash badrefs, and I type in ls here, you can see I have my two sub volumes. So I have the root sub volume and the home sub volume. 
So now I can create a new subvolume that I will later mount on the directory I created before. So to do this, I can type in sudo padrefs subvolume create, and I'm going to call the subvolume snapshots, and then hit enter. There you go, created the subvolume snapshots. So what I can do now, I can move out of this directory by typing in cd and then two dots here to go back to the mount directory. And now I can unmount first the badrefs directory, which contains also the new subvolume. Actually, I could have shown you that. Let me go back in there. If I type in ls here, you can see we have also the snapshots of volumes that we created before. So I go back one directory here and unmount the badrefs directory. So sudo you mount slash mnt slash badrefs and hit enter here. I could have typed only badrefs. And now we can also remove that directory because we don't need it anymore. So sudo rmdir because it's an empty directory on badrefs and hit enter. There you go. So I'll go back to my home directory here. Now we need to create a new mount point into the fs tab file. So to do this, we can type in sudo nano, which is the default editor in Fedora slash etc slash fs tab and hit enter. Now you can see here the uh, root partition, the root file system and the home subvolume have the same UUID and that's going to be the same for the snapshot subvolume. So I'm going to just copy over here this UUID here and I'm going to move down here on the editor and paste that in with control shift V. And then I'm going to define the mount point, which is the directory we created, which is slash dot snapshots. And the file system is badrefs, of course. And the options I'm going to give here just subvol equal snapshots. And the file system checks are, of course, 0 and 0 for a badrefs file system. And then we can save the file with control O and enter and exit with control X. Now, let me try to mount this by typing in sudo mount dash A. And you can see we have no error. So that's good. When Linux is not complaining, it's always a good sign. And so let me clean up the terminal. Now, the next step is very important. If we type in now in the terminal sudo padrefs subvolume get dash default on the root file system, you can see we have the ID and file system tree here. So actually, I want to make sure that when the system boots, the default subvolume is going to be the root subvolume. So you're going to see afterwards why. But let me do that by typing in sudo badrefs subvolume set default. And you remember the ID for the root subvolume was 258. And then we are going to define this on the root file system. And then we can hit enter. Now, if I repeat the previous two commands here, you can see now the default subvolume is the root subvolume. And now we need to make a change also to the grab configuration for Fedora because by default, it actually makes us boot in a specific subvolume. And that makes actually booting then in other snapshots on rollback basically impossible. So there is a tool here in Fedora, which is called Grabby, and I will leave a link to it in the video description below. There is a very nice article on the Fedora documentation. So let's check first by typing in sudo grabby dash dash info equal all. So we're going to check all entries there on the grab bootloader and hit enter. So you can see by default here, we have our kernel parameter here. We have also the arguments. So we have here read only, we have uh, the root flag subvol root, which is the one we need to remove. And then we have the red hat graphical boot here and the quiet option. And then we have the same things also for other kernels. For example, for this kernel here, which is an, which is an older kernel because I updated the system before and also the fallback image. So what we are going to do, we are going to remove this flag here, this argument from the grab bootloader. So I'm just going to copy this and we're going to remove this from each one of these images. So to do this, we can type in sudo grabby dash dash update dash kernel equal all because we want to remove it from every images in the grab bootloader and then dash dash remove dash arcs equal double quote and we paste in what we copied in before and then close the statement with a double quote again and then we can hit enter there you go so if we run again the info command as before here you can see we have basically the ro here and RHGB and quiet, but the other flag is gone and it's gone also from the other images from here and from here. So now let's try to reboot and see if everything worked correctly. So let's type in reboot here and hit enter. And it's going to take a moment here to reboot the machine. You can see actually also there the new Fedora logo, which just popped up very quickly. 
and I can see the machine is booting up correctly so I can log in here with my password and I need to open up again a terminal here so let me go full screen again and increase the font size and let's check as I said before the defaults of volume so let's type in sudo padrefs subvolume get dash default on the root file system need to authenticate of course and you can see it's correct because this is the subvolume we defined as a default subvolume now we don't have any snapshot yet in the system if I type in sudo snapper ls to list the snapshots you can see it's empty so let's go ahead and install something so let's type in sudo dnf install and I'm going to install neofetch and then hit enter so it's going to check once the repository is here and we have some packages to install so I'm going to hit y and install this is not going to take long these are not uh, not big packages there you go and let's check again the snapshots in our system by typing in snapper ls because we installed the plugin we should have the snapshots available and as you can see here actually I'm going to make this a little smaller you can see there we have two snapshots a pre snapshots and a post snapshots so one before we installed neofetch and one now that we installed neofetch now if we want to roll back to the previous snapshot here we need to use the rollback command so if we type in sudo snapper and then rollback on the number one snapshot we are going to get an error as you can see here it says cannot detect ambit since default sub volume is unknown so we need to use the ambit option for this operation to work in this case so to do this we need to type in sudo snapper dash dash ambit and the ambit is classic and then roll back on the first snapshot and then we can hit enter so as you can see there it created a read-only snapshot of the current system which is going to be called snapshot number three it created a read and write snapshot of snapshot number one which is called snapshot four and then it's going to set the default sub volume to snapshot four so that means if we would reboot the machine now let's try this out and it's going to take again a moment to reboot i can enter my password here and open up again a terminal and I'll go full screen here now if i type in neofetch we should get an error saying that the command is not present and as you can see it's the case so i don't want to install it so i'm just going to accept the defaults here and if i type in again sudo snapper ls and authenticate of course you can see now we are using snapshot number four which is a writable copy of snapshot number one so that means if i want to go back now to the post snapshot here i can use this time sudo snapper rollback on two and then hit enter and as you can see it says here now it created read only snapshot of current system so it created a snapshot number five it created a read and write snapshot of, snap of snapshot number two and then it's setting the default sub volume to, to snapshot number six so again if we type in again one last time reboot here we are going to be able to reboot the machine and this time we should be able to use the neofetch command because it's belonging to the post snapshot that we created after we installed the neofetch package so let's enter here our machine and let me open up here a terminal again and go full screen increase the font size and if I type in neofetch and you can see we have neofetch here so let me scroll through the commands here I just want to see the snapshots one more time here you can see here we have our snapshots so we have basically snapshot number six which is a writable, uh, writable copy of snapshot number two now we can go ahead here also and delete some of these snapshots if we don't need them anymore to do this we can type in sudo snapper delete we can delete for example snapshot number four because it's a writable copy of the first one and you can see it's gone here if we type in again the last command you can see snapshot number four is gone and i can repeat the process also for other snapshots now i'm not going to do this if you want you can just test these things out yourself if you are creating more snapshots what i wanted to show you here is also the fact that we can check also the frequency of how many snapshots we want to have in the system so first of all we need to check if crony or a cron service is installed uh, by default so to check this we can type in system ctl status crony and hit enter 
And you can see the crony service is not found, so it's not installed basically. So we could install that. And if you install it, actually the timeline, which is already set in the configuration file for the root configuration will be taken care of automatically. Otherwise, otherwise we need to use the systemd timers. Now, if I type in here sudo nano slash etc slash snapper slash configs slash root, which is the configuration we created before, these are the options we have by default for cleaning up or creating also snapshots. So for example, if I scroll down here, you can see we have here run daily number cleanups. Yes, it's already set. But this, as I said, is going to work only if crony is installed. And then we have the limit for number cleanup. So we have the minimum age, the limit is 50 and the number limit important is also 50. We have the timeline create. Yes, it's already set. And then we have the limits for the timeline. So this is actually something that you might want to change. So for me, this is actually slightly too much. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go here to the timeline limit hourly. I'm going to change this actually instead of 10, I'm going to change to, let's say three. And for daily, I'm going to go to five. And I think I'm going to do actually zero for the rest because otherwise the system is going to be filled up fairly quickly here. Although this is a virtual machine, but I don't want to have too many snapshots. So this is actually going to do it for me. So I can save this file and exit. So I can type in sudo dnf install and then crony and then hit enter. So it's going to check the repositories. As you can see there, it's installing crony and also the crony anachron and cron tabs. So I accept the changes here. There you go. Let's check now if the system is now available. So let's type in system CTL status crony service. And you can see it's enabled, but it's not started. That means if I would restart the machine, it's going to be started automatically. But I can, but I can do this now by typing in sudo system CTL start cron D service and then hit enter. So if I check the status again, you can see it's up and running. That means the timeline we have now on Snapper is going to basically take care of the snapshots and it's going to take care of the configuration and it's going to delete eventually snapshots depending on how you define them in the timeline. Another solution would be to use the systemd timers and I did actually a video for that uh, on Arch Linux and I'm going to maybe explore this a little bit more in depth in another video if you are interested in systemd timers for timeline cleanup for Snapper. But this is everything I wanted to show you actually in this video for Fedora 34 and Snapper. So I'm going to check maybe in another video if I can also install GrabBudderFS here so that we can have snapshots on boot. But this is going to be it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions about it, let me know in the comments below. And again, if you want to support my work, you can become a Patreon. As you probably already know, I'm doing a live webinar on Patreon with my Patreons uh, once a month where we are focusing on a topic about Linux, of course. And if you want, you can also donate via PayPal through my website as well. So thank you very much for watching the video, guys. I really appreciate that. And I'll see you very soon in the next one.